So we wanted to just give you a quick update on the company. Excel is a 35 plus year old company, a leader in custom design battery packs. Uh, we really support multiple market segments worldwide, including medical, test and measurement. Uh, we began our journey in the oil and gas industry, which is really a prominent market segment for us today. We are uh, manufacturing of North America, which means we have three facilities in Canada, one in Houston. Uh, our engineering capabilities reside with Mike in our Surrey location. We have a full suite of engineering capabilities, including electrical, mechanical, and software engineering. Uh, again, we do testing, and we are certified to ISO 13485. So I think we are at the point where we can start answering some questions. Uh, I will start fielding those. And um, the first one is, which battery chemistries are best suited to high reliability applications? And Mike, I think this one will go to you. I'm sure. So um, for high reliability, um, you're probably best to pick some of the lower energy density chemistries, um, lithium iron phosphate, um, or if, if you need something a little bit a little bit higher energy density, um, the nickel-based lithium ion chemistries, uh, NMC or NCA. Okay, thank you. The next one is, how has cell capacity changed in recent years? Bob, can you answer that one? I could certainly try, but I don't have the numbers in front of you, but improvements to the chemistry by R&D in engineering has improved the efficiency of cells over the years. So the capacities have increased 20, 30% since they've first come out. So we're continuing to see improvements as things get looked at in the R&D labs across the cell manufacturers. Thanks, Todd. The next question is what mechanical and or electrical design considerations are taking, taken to making a pack such as ATEX or HasLog certified? Mike? Yeah, this one is is a bit of a, a, a can of worms. <laughs> a lot of it ends up relying on um, which which uh, uh, zone and div you are going to be uh, going into, like explosive gases or dusts, stuff like that. Um, often it is a significant amount of redundancy in the BMS for things like um, overcurrent and over temperature specifically. Uh, those are usually triple redundant. Um, you'll see a lot of potting compounds used to reduce the clearances required and um, uh, encapsulation as well. Okay, thank you. The next question, um, I believe it's also for you, Mike. Are there, light, are there battery chemistries that have a lower probability of thermal runaway? Yeah, this also will be kind of inversely proportional to energy density. Um, lithium iron phosphate is less susceptible, um, both by nature of energy density and um, by the, the materials it's made from, they're inherently less volatile. And things like nickel metal hydride or NICAT are also less, less susceptible. Okay, thank you. Are there, the next question, are there specific cell sizes or chemistries that are currently exper experiencing supply chain issues? Ron? Well, I think that's a really easy question to answer <clears throat> what we're seeing day to day. Um, but specifically, uh, lithium ion right now uh, is uh, a lot of it is on allocation, it drips and drabs of white. Order. Um, and that would probably be the hot spot. Uh, some of your primary cells as well, uh, SAFT or Tataran cells, are also seeing some fairly long lead times. Okay, the next question. Should the BMS protection mechanism include redundancy? Mike? Um, yes, yes, it should. Um, at minimum, uh, that redundancy should should include a fuse of some sort, whether that's a PTC or a one-time fuse. Um, on top of that, there are many use cases like um, high reliability or medical devices where it is wise to have um, redundant over voltage protection as well. And that over voltage protection will drive a, a separate circuit that will intervene if the primary protection mechanism fails for some reason. Thank you. 
Next question. There appear to be many types of cells to select from. How do you go from selecting a cell? Where do I get this information on cells? Uh, Ron, I think that one will turn to you. So there, um, there's a lot of information out there, fortunately, on the World Wide Web. Uh, but often, uh, you know, I came from the electronics industry. After spending many, many years, I came into the battery business some 19 years ago, and I thought this would be an easy transition. I, I think your your best source is to get um, is to seek out a a well qualified um, battery pack fabrication company and have a discussion with them about your application. That's the best way to make sure that you get the right cell for that application. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question: Should we design with twenty one seven hundred cells? versus 18650s where possible. Uh, Ron or Mike, can take this one. Sure, I can take that one. Um, yes, oh, <laughs> it's pretty straightforward right now. Um, 21700s are uh, expected to become more available in the long term, um, whereas 18650s will eventually reduce. Um, most of the development and innovation is going into that 21700 form factor. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question. Do you have any method of communicating the battery health to my device? What would, would this help with the safety of the battery? I think, Mike, this one's for you as well. Sure. Um, yeah, so we, we have a couple different solutions um, within our Criterion family. Um, on the lithium ion side, uh, that is in the form of um, uh, an SBS compliant fuel gauge and that will report over SMBUS, um, both state of charge and state of health. That, that state of health variable can be uh, fairly valuable to knowing when to get it out of the field. Um, and getting it out of the field when it's at the end of its life will inherently increase the safety. Okay, the next question. At what stage of the design cycle should I consider the standards? I need to consider and how do I know what standards to cover? I think, Mike, we're going to give that one to you as well. <laughs> You're going to take the bulk, I think. <laughs> um, right at the start for uh, regulatory standards. And it's fairly important to um, both consider and communicate which ones you intend to go for uh, right away. They can have a pretty significant impact on both the electronic and mechanical design of, of the product. So having a, a pretty good understanding of that up front means there's no surprises when we go to testing. Okay, the next question. What type of cells should I consider for ATEX and HasLog? Uh, Ron? I probably would turn that one over to Mike. But Mike, I, okay. <laughs> I, I can take it. I was trying to feel, let Mike get a break here. <laughs> no problem. Um, if, if lithium ion, they're going to be essentially what are considered the older, lower energy density cells. Um, uh, a big part of the ATEX and HASLOC approval process is peak temperature during short circuit. And these um, lower energy density cells have higher internal resistance and less capacity, which means um, during short circuit, the, the cell temperature will be lower. Okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, next question, is cell potting or pack uh, in, with thermal conductive materials common? And what are the main applications for such designs? Thermal management, waterproofing, et cetera. So I think that one goes to you as well, Mike. Yeah, um, it is mostly, let's say more common within the like hazardous locations, ATEX, um, IECX type of, of application. Um, and um, it, it's mostly, mostly for, um, thermal management, less, less so for waterproofing, but uh, it can be a pretty good way to get towards waterproofing rather than relying entirely on the enclosure. At the end of the day, no matter how well designed the enclosure is, um, some water will probably get in at some point. Um, thermally conductive materials are, are common, um, especially in the oil and gas segment. Um, mostly just because the, the packs are operated at fairly high temperatures and you don't have a lot of margin for the components themselves to increase above ambient. 
Okay, thank you. I think we have time for one or two more questions. The next one, do you do you do mechanical electrical tests on the prototype batteries and do you have the capability to do this? Um, Ron? Um, yes, uh, we do have the capabilities. My team certainly has, including even a bunker out there uh, where they can try and blow things up. So we do um, do both mechanical and electrical testing. Um, lithium ion packs, for example, are not batch tested at, at QA. Uh, we have automated test equipment. We run those packs through uh, as individual packs and we log all that data. Uh, so we're uh, being responsible for that battery pack uh, when it's out in the field. Um, it means that we need to ensure that it's both mechanically and electrically safe. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question, where can I get a list of specifications you require to start the design of the pack? Uh, Bob, we'll give that one to you. I'd say the best place to start is our website. We do have a request for quote form that will take you through basically all the questions we would like to ask or to know the answers to. Um, if you're trying to design a device that requires a battery. So we'll take you through step-by-step step to help you fill out all the information we need to at least come up with a battery design for you. So it is on our website, excelbattery.com. And if you look on the menu, you'll see requests for, for quote. Yeah, I think one, one other thing too, uh, Bob, to mention there is that we do have a requirement sheet. So we will send that to you that you can fill out. That helps guide the design of the battery uh, prior to giving it to Mike and his team uh, to develop the solution. Okay. Um, one last question. What should I do to ensure I have sales considering the supply issues? Um, Ron? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, one thing that, that Excel has addressed and uh, we began this process uh, probably a year and a half ago as we saw this becoming more and more of an issue. Um, certainly, uh, we do our best to have available inventory for new designs and starting the process. Uh, and then our customers, we have, uh, my inventory in this branch is the highest it's ever been simply because we did a lot of buying based on what we thought we would see We're also got the message out clearly to, to the existing customers that they really need to book orders ahead. We have in a lot of cases now, we have customer orders booked out to the end of 2022 so that we can work with the various vendors, sell suppliers to, to make sure that we can cover those customer requirements. Hey, thank you very much. Um, that concludes our session for today. I want to thank everyone for joining us. As I mentioned in the beginning of today's event, we are videotaping this, so that will be available to all of you, including today's presentation. Uh, we also will be sending out a questionnaire. We ask that you take a few minutes, just fill that out. That helps guide us for the next presentation. And we will be um, promoting another one here in the next couple of months, so please stay tuned for that. Um, again, if you have any questions or you need additional information, please feel free to reach out to me directly uh, or via our web website. So with that, I'd like to say thanks and everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you.